The UN estimates that in half of Asia we could be facing water stress or outright shortages by the year 2025 and as many as three out of four people around the globe will be affected by water security over the next decades. Uh, less access to safe, stable, potable water supplies could potentially have a lot of impact on security throughout the region and maybe even trigger some serious social, uh, socio-political unrest. Our next key guest uh, believes a key factor in water security will be partnerships between government and the private sector. Let's say hi to Len Rodman, Chair, President and CEO of Black and Beach. Black and Beach is a U.S. engineering and civil contracting firm and joins us from Singapore, where he's attending Singapore International Water Week. Sounds like a lot of fun. I wish I were there. I can't imagine what I'm missing. Uh, Len, good to have you. Uh, Sean Darby from Nomura is with me here uh, in Hong Kong today. Question. Um, we've, uh, I remember years ago uh, watching uh, clips of Margaret Mead uh, protesting. We're talking in the 60s or early 70s uh, for more clean water in the world. You mean that three decades, four decades down the road, we still haven't nailed down this problem? Well, Bernie, we have a fixed asset, as you pointed out, in the amount of water that's available to all of us. And as demand has increased through time through higher population levels and more industrial use, that commodity is still there at the same levels and possibly with more contamination in it. So we need to work diligently for a sustainable future in our water business. Mm -hmm. are, what, where are we right now in the whole process? Are we at mission critical or... Uh, have we had plenty of advance warning to get our collective acts together? Well, there are several things that come into play. Forums like Singapore International Water Week bring a broad variety of leaders together to talk about the successes and lessons learned. And I think as time goes on, these lessons learned will be uh, broader based and we'll be able to solve large problems in the water industry. Certainly there's no reason for panic. On the other hand, we cannot be complacent. Leaders need to make good policy decisions and industry needs to help facilitate and bring together the various parties so that we understand that one individual's liabilities could be another person's assets. Are we, uh, have we seen a pullback or perhaps a putting on the back burner issues of this nature because of the uh, difficult times we're going through? Well, mixed results, Bernie. Uh, certainly demand for electrical power and water is off from what it was a year or two ago. And that's probably a benefit. Certainly a concern about credit support for large project schemes and large investments is there. And many clients are trying to deal with that. On the other hand, we are seeing clients that are really moving ahead because it's a buyer's market. Prices for infrastructure and availability of resources are much better than they've been for a number of years. So wise clients are out there making plans and going ahead with projects. Some other clients are taking this added capacity that they've got and faux capacity, if you will, from demand reductions to use it as a time when more strategic planning can be done. Sustainability is a relatively new concept in our industry, and it is the time when wise utilities can go out and look at what sustainable long-term solutions are available to them. So as demand increases, they will be in a better position to move forward. So uh, good news is that there's capacity, mm -hmm. and good news is prices are low. The bad news is for some clients that credit is mm -hmm. not as readily available, mm -hmm. and they would have difficulty moving ahead with projects today. Okay, there's, there, there's your financial crisis and the future of water. Sean? What I was going to ask is just how easy it is for governments at the moment to raise water prices, particularly in the, in the developing economies, given the constraints that uh, a lot of people have on their, on their incomes? Is it still very difficult to raise uh, domestic water prices to fund all of these uh, projects? Certainly, Sean. Uh, the challenge that any entity has, and particularly in developing countries, is to 
transmit and communicate what the fair value of water is. I spoke last evening with a group of ministers about this specific subject, and it's obvious to me that what we will see as countries move forward and are more developed and progressing forward, they will be able to capture more of the true cost of water or be able to price for the value that it provides. In developing countries, I think, or developed countries, I believe we're pretty well there now. Uh, there is a true match between tariffs and value. I think the challenge, though, for everyone is the marginal cost for the next quantum of water that will be delivered. As we need to use more polluted sources or seawater for the source of potable water supply, the cost will move up markedly, and that will be a challenge for communication to the consumers that use the water today who have benefited from relatively low commodity pricing to this point. Len, uh, if I could use the auto industry as an example, you know, there's, uh, you know, the big push toward hybrids and electric cars, even the Chinese have come up with electric cars. Things like desalination, membrane technology for uh, microfiltration have been here for uh, some time. Is there any kind of a big bang that's coming in the water industry that could redefine the landscape? Well, the true issue there, I believe, Sean, is the balance between uh, effective treatment and energy usage, or the nexus of energy and water, as we like to say. The big bang, from our perspective, is reducing the energy required for desalination or the membrane treatments, as well as technology advancements for ceramics and other materials that will make these technologies more amenable to selective removal of pollutants. At Singapore, uh, tomorrow and the next day, we'll be reviewing some of the technologies, and it looks like in the not-too-distant future, there will be Ooh. products on the marketplace where the energy input per unit of volume for desalination will be decreased by over 50 percent, and that will be mm -hmm. a game-changer for desalination in many of the right. advanced treatment processes. So stay tuned Len, for quick, that. Uh, I will, absolutely. Len, quick uh, question, last, last one, and give me a quick last answer on this. How politicized is this subject? I mean, people do understand they get a bit nervous about water supplies being in the hand of uh, a profit-seeking entity. Is that not an issue anymore? Well, uh, name the place, and there's certainly an opinion that will go along with it. I think now as communities mm -hmm. and entities and governments have better politicized and communicated what value water really provides, uh, the consumers are more educated and understand that they will get a high quality product and okay. if it has a profit potential with uh -huh. it, so be it. But indeed, what okay. they are looking for is a reliable supply of water and of high quality to meet their basic needs. Len Heffern at Singapore Water Week and thanks for joining us on the show today.